Greetings everyone. Welcome to Cambria Naturals Practical Session. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for turning on that notification button. So if you have not done so, feel free to subscribe. So as we start this lesson, it's going to be our soap making session for beginners. It's a totally beginner's guide soap making session. So from this one, we shall build up to making more luxurious soaps. So we are going to deal with our lye type of making the soap. So there are two kinds of soap. We have the normal soap, the customized commercial soap. Then we have the handmade soaps and then we have organic soaps. So today we're going to deal with handmade soaps. So as we start this session, I'd like to share with you some ground rules. Single musana, but ni basics. These are basics that you should have in order for you to be safe and for you to enjoy this session. So first of all, ensure you have your gloves on. These are reusable gloves. Find them from any supermarket, from any provider next to you. If you are not down for reusable ones, maybe you don't like washing or they are not that comfortable, feel free to have the disposable one. Buy them in a box, it's way cheaper. Find them from any chemist, any shop near you. Yeah, mostly chemists, they should be able to have this in stock. Then apart from the gloves, you should have your mask on. Reason being, soap is a... Soap is, when you mix alkaline and fat, you should be able to have your soap. And the alkaline, that is your lye, is a mixture of water and sodium hydroxide. So during this biochemical reaction, there are fumes. And these fumes, sometimes they are choking. Actually, most of the times, they are choking fumes. So you should be able to have your mask on to avoid being choked. Next, you should be able to have your goggles on for the safety of your eyes. Have closed shoes on, just in case there is spillage. So I'm, sometimes... You might be able to spill your lye. Protect your legs, please. Have your apron on to protect your clothing. Have long sleeved on to protect your bare hands whenever there is spillage also. And above all, ensure you're working in a well-ventilated place so that in case of the reaction, the fumes are able to safely go outside. And if you can't mix in a well-ventilated place, be free to go and mix outside. You don't have to mix in a room. I'll show you how you are going to mix our lye from outside, where there is good air circulation. Now let's begin. So if you are new to this soap making, don't worry, I'll teach you the basics of how to make soaps. So by the end of this session, you should be able to make at least a basic soap from the comfort of your home. So, the tools. Now, what are the tools that are needed? First and foremost, you're going to use really easy tools so that you don't find the need to do extra shopping. So you're going to use what you have. You should be able to have your scale. This is a normal scale. Find this scale from the supermarket at the kitchen section. You should be able to find the scale from vendors. I believe they are vendors who supply the scales. Then you should be able to have a temperature gun. This should, you are going to use this to see your lie, the temperature of your lie because you're going to mix everything at room temperature. This is a cold press soap. So we are going to make sure everything is cold and at room temperature. Also, have your beakers. Feel free to either have a glass beaker or not necessarily a glass beaker. You can also have a plastic beaker. This is just a jug, only that is calibrated. Find this from the supermarket. Also this, chemist supermarket. Or if you want a cheaper option, you can also get them from the laboratory supply shops. Like in Nairobi, we have most of them. So feel free to contact any of them. Like that. Once you have your beaker on, you should either have a hand blender. A hand blender simply makes mixing easy. And if you are starting from your kitchen, just as I've shown you, you can always start from somewhere that you can actually afford to start from. Make sure you label your soap making tools and equipments. Reason, don't mix them with the cooking tools because it may contaminate your food. So to avoid contamination of your food, label all your equipments like this one and blender I've labeled soap, something like this. But if you are going to use from a different place, you don't have to label. So this one is label to show you what you're going to do. Next, if you're making small batches, you may actually not require a hand blender. You can still use a spatula. Find this spatula from online supermarkets. 
check any online shop you might be able to find a spatula and last but not least what you require the most is your mold these are silicon molds any shape any flowers what suits you today we are going to start with this normal silicon molds as we progress and do more designs we shall go to the wooden molds but for today let's keep it simple now let's start making the soap Sasa are too excited. As we make the soap, kindly ensure that you have all your calculations ready. First and foremost, follow your calculations. To begin with, I'll share with you our light solution calculation. So we have three types of light solution. First of all, you can either have a low, light sol low water, medium water, or high water. So when you say our low water, it's simply a light solution of 50-50. 50% water, 50% sodium hydroxide. But you're not going to work with that. Reason being, it's so fast. The soap will saponify so fast and it won't give you room to work with the soap properly. And it's also a bit irritating to the skin. So we'll also have a medium light solution that is 30-70 or 33-67%. So you can either have 33% of sodium hydroxide, 67% of water, or 30% sodium hydroxide and 70% of water. I prefer 30-70 because it's a middle ground and it's safe for your skin and the curing time is also 21 to 30 days and also it's not irritating to your skin. Then we have the fast water. That is the high water. We have the high water. In the high water category, it's usually at 25-75. So I find this a little bit slow. It will even take a longer time to cure. So I'll advise you to use the medium water light solution. So some of you, najua mathematics, ah, mathematics yenu. So if you're not a fan of mathematics, I'll attach to you the soap calc, where you can simply put in your values, your light solution, your oil percentage, and it will give you the calculation of the light solution. And also the grams of oils you're going to use. But if you're a fan of calculations, Let's get, in, get into calculating our light solution. Now, in calculating our light solution, we are going to follow simple rules. Those are from normalcertifiedlie.com. So we are going to use, for you to get a light solution, you are going to take your amount of fats, multiply by your saponification value. Amount of fats, multiply by saponification value. Yes, Abu Niraisi, to support Amount of fat, saponification value. What do I mean by saponification value? Each oil has a particular saponification value attached to it. So I'll attach to you an, a link, of course, to show you all the oils with all the saponification value. So don't worry about the value. You don't have to cram. You can simply refer to the link every time that you need to know the value. Also, on making the soap, we are going to use olive oil, and coconut oil. These are our basic oil. Olive oil, it's amazing. It has good lathering properties. Olive oil, not so much. It's not good in lathering, but it's amazing for moisturizing. So we are combining these two to get perfect lathering, perfect moisturizing. This is actually the beginner's soap. It's good for babies. It has no additive, no essential oil, no foaming properties, just oil and alkaline. So we shall always ensure our soap has 65% of total fat matter. That is like a Kenyan requirement. Have 65% of total fat matter. Why? Make your soap more moisturizing and make your soap more safe. So what do you mean? If you have, let's say your soap is 750 grams, kindly ensure 65% of that is total fat matter. It's your fat. That is your oils. So for today, we are going to make 750 gram of soap. Our coconut will be 50% and our olive 50%. So just as I've shown you the calculations, all these calculations will be attached below. So kindly go with me as we make the soap now. So to take the soap pamoja, simple, have your weighing scale ready. Always ensure you use the grams I'm not good with the ounces or the pounds, so let's stick to grams. So, ta your wing scale. Then, using the plastic container, place it here. 
As you can see through our calculations here that I've already done, we are saying that we are using 50% coconut and 50% olive. So if we take those calculations, I'm going to attach for you, so don't worry if you won't be able to follow me right now. Ensure that you follow those calculations. I'll attach to you the form. So coconut oil, as you have seen from our calculation, is 243.75 grams, even olive oil, the same amount, because it's 50, 50%. At this level, I'll request you to always buy soap in small oils. I'll request you to buy oils in small quantities. Reason being, you are still testing. So you're trying to find which oil suits you, which oil suits the type of soap that you're trying to make. But if you have done this before, you can just buy the oils in bulk. So, but I'll advise you to buy them in small quantities. I'll attach to you links of where you can buy your oils in small quantities. So this is our coconut oil directly from Mombasa, since Mombasa and Equitu. So ensure you get genuine things out there. Here, this one is 200. And so after ensuring your oils are ready, put your oil aside. Now we're going to measure our light. Before we even measure a lie, ensure you have your gloves on. So you can always have your gloves on even in the beginning. But I like to use my oils once they remain. Kibaki kidogo, kiamwaka kwa mkono, napaka tu. So, now have your gloves on. Now let's mix our light. Put a container. So from our value, our lie is supposed to be, our initial lie value is supposed to be 76.28. So if you have to, you, ha you have to make sure, yes, it's at the correct value. Okay, 76.28, like that. Once your sodium hydroxide is okay, you just measure your water. So take in another jug or another container, measure in your distilled water. So in this case, ensure you purchase your distilled water from your any local chemist. So it can either be deionized water like this or return the normal distilled water like that. So ensure you check your expiry date. Like this one expires in 2022, 2023. Anything you buy, kindly check your expiry date to make sure that you are working within the required time. So now, for the distilled water, we are going to take a 70-30 rule. So that is 70% of the life solution is going to be distilled water. So our distilled water is around 177.99 grams. So again, you simply just weigh in your distilled water. If it's a lot, you can pour it aside. You don't have to return to the same jar just to avoid contamination. Now, when you have your water ready and your sodium hydroxide ready, we are going to create our 30, 70% light solution. So we shall go outside. So because outside we are sure of having a good ventilation for any beginner. So follow me outside for us to create our light solution. Ensure you remove all the crystals. Stir. As you keep stirring, you'll notice that there are fumes that come, come out of the reaction. So that's why you are required to have your mask on. Once your reaction is well stirred, just leave your solution outside until it gets to room temperature. We shall come back to check the temperature so that we can continue with the saponification. Start pouring your soap in the molds. And before you even pour your soap in the molds, ensure that your molds are well lubricated. Just put some oil, a little bit of oil in the molds so that your mold is well lubricated. Now start pouring your soap. Pour your soap. So now leave the soap on top to harden a bit because the soap is so, it's still 
a bit wet, so you can't lift it. So leave it here on the surface to harden a bit, but cover the soap well. And once it has hardened a little bit, cover your soap with a carton box on top, place it in the, in the box also, and then wrap it with a blanket. This way it will ensure that your soap cures with time. And after 24 hours, you'll come back to see how your soap is progressing. If the soap has hardened enough, remove the soap and put it in the box, store it in a cool place for the 21 days to leave it to cure. So our handmade soap have to cure for around 21 to 30 days. But if you are making organic soap, you can use it immediately. So guys, after 24 hours, your soap is supposed to be a little bit hardened and ready for you to shift it to a box. So these are the soaps that I made yesterday with the same calculations and the same batch. So for your demonstration purposes, this is how your soap is supposed to look at. You see, this is just coconut and olive soap like that. So for this particular one, I'd like to show you, if you touch your soap before it cures, it leaves a dent. So ensure when you put it in a surface, don't touch the soap, don't move the soap, leave the soap to harden a bit before you move. But still it has cured, still you are going to use it like that. Remove all the soap from the molds like that. Simple. So if you want colors, next time we shall learn where we're going to add our colors. If you want different patterns, different beautiful shapes, yes, subscribe in the channel so that you can keep learning and improving on our soap making skills. So guys, if you want to stick around and see more soaps and learn to make more soaps as Christmas is coming, learn to make beautiful soaps, kindly subscribe and see you next time. Hasta la vista, guys.